Chocolate Dogs and how are you this morning? I hope you're all wonderful and having a lovely weekend. It looks absolutely amazing outside. Um, really, really, really lovely. Um, the weather looks amazing. So um, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing in a little while. Uh, but yeah, hello. So let me know where what you're doing at the moment of what the weather is like in your part of the world um so yes as i said um oh good morning georgie good morning lovely friend so i'm sitting here you know the rolls don't you hopefully you've got a cup of tea and i've got i've got a cup of tea in this mug i'll just turn it around and it says um there it robert bought me it as part of my christmas present so it's a lovely one what does it actually read so it says friend which is a noun thank you for telling me um my partner in crime instant laughing buddy and person that keeps all my secrets you're my favorite forever <laughs> very true very true and uh so and then i've got me my cordial so good morning cheers uh thank you brigitte it is show 336 can you imagine 336 shows ago this was just an idea um so i'm sitting here i've actually had half of my cordial already um and i'm going to be uploading something into the group so i can show you something because i said today <coughs> i was going to show you two books that i'd recently um bought and what inspired me to buy them like some of the amazing pictures and uh laura says Good morning, all oh, and goggle froggers. Good morning, Lara, and I hope that hope that you're feeling much, much better. Um, so here, cheers. I'm going, going to have a nice little slurp of my tea. Mm. Oh, there's something. Do you know what your first drink of the morning is just amazing, isn't it? Whether it's tea or coffee, whatever you drink, it's absolutely amazing. So just got everything done, and I think as the clock struck ten, got my lippy on. <laughs> so we're all ready to go. Um, so the rules are, we, I'm just going to chat for an hour with you. I don't know if there's anything in the Facebook group. Robert has said uh, that the music is cued. And the most important thing, I think, to say is happy Eurovision Day. So it's the Eurovision Song Contest today. And um, an hour entry is actually supposed to do really really well and i have to say I can't, I can't remember the fella's name but i think it's amazing so let's keep our fingers crossed that we're going to do well because last year we had one of those nil point um so let's just hope that this year it all changes um even if we've got one point it'd be better wouldn't it uh, better than last year but i think it, it should do okay um and um yeah so we will i don't know how many of you actually watch eurovision um it's something that i think over the last few years has got a little bit more trendy um if i'm perfectly honest because i think a few years ago um i think everyone just sort of left it didn't they but now it's come back so anyway i had to run out to my car and get my um knitting out so i'm just going to have a look and see why i am tied up with field and i've got two projects in here ah is that the end there yes it is so let's get the do you know what no it goes that way do you do this with your projects as well trying to get them all in order right we're we're almost there that's it we're in order i've separated them and just to give you a sneak peek this is my it hasn't been blocked can i just say but this is my cow so this is the bind off so you can see it's a twisted bind off and this is the the cast on i'm doing it again now um but yeah i've got two twists as you cast on as you cast off which i was rather pleased with uh, so that's going to be one of the projects at the retreat and then i will do the um and then the pattern with a little video will go live but retreat goggle frogs retreat people you'll be the first ones to get this all right so um it'll part, be part of a workshop so here we go um there's a chat box on the right side just write in the chat box um and i will read out what people are saying hello to everyone on replay and hello to everyone on youtube um, um replay and youtube we don't record the chat box 
Um, so that's why we read it out so everybody knows what people have been saying. So I hope that you're having a really, 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 really lovely morning. And now I've got my knitting in my hand, a simple knit. I do feel good. Um, so that's good. Um, so let's see, let's say some good morning, shall we? Saturday morning is always the same. At the beginning, it's small, <coughs> but perfectly formed. Um, so let's say some good mornings. I'd like to say some good, a good morning to Laura. Lovely to see you. Good morning, Janice. How are you doing? And good morning, Georgie. Lovely to see you. Good morning, Brigitte. Lovely to see you. And good morning, Amber and Princess Curtain Crusher, all the way over in the US of A. So lovely to see you too. And I know we'll have more people. The Saturday mornings are just like that, aren't they? Um, so yeah, I just about got ready. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been a bit of a rush this morning. Uh, but we're here. Actually, if, I'm, if I move that, this is a cardigan I, I finished years ago. Um, it's a Katia pattern. I actually really like it, but if I was doing it again, I'd make it longer. And I have to say, this bit here does take quite a while, but it's pretty. Um, but I think I would make it not as wide and longer um, in future. But yeah, it was, a, it was a really nice pattern. Do you know what? I've just realised this is so similar to that black shawl that I made, isn't it? Oh, and I'm just thinking we've got some storm left, so I might have to try and get into the um, in, into the stock <laughs> and make something similar to that. Hey ho! So let's have a look at chat. So I'll go through again. Georgie says morning, lovely friend. Good morning, Georgie. Lovely to see you. Brigitte says good morning, peeps. Three three six. I can't believe it. <coughs> Three hundred thirty six shows plus a few other bits. Laura says, good morning all and goggle froggers. Yes, COVID is a distant memory. Well, sort of. Yay. Um, yeah, I just have this stupid little cough left. Um, but totally fine. And Laura says, um, that's beautiful, Angela. Uh, what was beautiful? Sorry, I can't remember what I was showing. Um, I keep calling it COVID brain, but I think it's just me. <laughs> um, Amber says, good. Good morning, everyone from Princess Curtain Crusher. Yeah, hello. And Splodge is in there. So a big hello from Splodge too. Um, she's with the best friend, my mum. Um, so yeah. Oh, and good morning, Grace. Lovely to see you this morning. And Georgie says your cardigan is beautiful, Angela. Thank you. I forget how lovely it is. Um, and it is a lovely pattern. Oh, as you see, these things happen. Um, it is a really lovely pattern, but I, I absolutely love these bits. But like I said, it's a Katia pattern. I'll try and find out which Katia book it is, because uh, I'm sure that they're still there. But um, for me personally, I, I tend to wear things longer, so I make it longer in future. But it's a lovely, lovely pattern. Um, and I know a lot of people say they struggle with cat, Katia patterns, because you get this pattern book, and the pattern for quite a complicated item tends to be one little row um so you uh, you have to do exactly what they say <laughs> and it's not always as clear as you think so um yeah thank you very much um yeah and um sorry um oh laura says the 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 cowl and also the cardigan thank you so much i've forgotten that i'd shown you my cowl then and deborah hello Do deborah Good morning from the Malvern Hills. I hope you're having a fabulous time in the Malvern Hills. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Mm. Sorry, tea is just so lovely, isn't it? So just like to say, <clears throat> bought these from a certain popular shop in the UK. Um, got them from John Lewis. Um, they were actually cheaper than in the, um, the Apple shop. Am I allowed to say brands? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, and I sent them off. I took them in um, and they sent them off for repair. And uh, they came back day before yesterday. So they're all repaired. So that's great. So they work again now because when you flip that up, the little light comes on. It does. It's come on amber. Ah, we've got an amber on. Um, and then it goes off. So they stop charging properly other than when I put them on the charging plate. Um, and then I tried to speak to somebody on them and they said I sounded like a garlic. So I thought, D garlic Dalek. <laughs> so um that was that so i got them repaired so that was really quite good 
so I feel as if I can be relaxed. I've got my my my. It was a real treat for me because I never spend money like this on me ever. Um, but when you do stick them in, it cancels everything out. It's great. Uh, so you know, if you're if you want to watch something, there's a lot going on around you. You can cancel out the noise around you. So they're they're pretty good. Um, so I, know, I think it's about time for us to have a little bit of music, don't you? So I have no idea what Robert has queued up for us, but he says it's not cheese and it is not Eurovision. Even though it is happy Eurovision day, I don't know what he's queued up. So shall we sit back and enjoy and pick up our knitting? So here we go. I am going to queue this and enjoy. Um, I've, I've heard the song, not that version. Um, I've no idea what the film is about either but um, I'm sure you do and I'm sure you're going to educate me and I'm just putting something in the group um uh won't be a moment there we go um sorry I'm just putting something in the group so it's easier to talk about the pictures there we go. All done now. Oh, so I hope that that you love that. Uh, Deborah says, um, the weather is great. She spent the last two days at the quilt show. How was the quilt show? Um, and she will post some pics soon. That's amazing. So I hope that you had a lovely time. Um, and when we talk about quilts and things like that, um, you know, quilt shows, knitting shows, they have they have not been happening have they so what was it like was it busy with the the old faces there as well so let us know um as i know some of the um some of the shows have only had a, a, a small percentage of the normal exhibitors but let us know um i'm sure you had a fabulous time and did you buy something let us know uh georgie said that was lovely georgie i know you love um disney as well as robert i, I just the last Disney film I, I watched was probably at Robert's house uh, when it was on in the background. Um, and Brigitte says, you can just imagine Giovanni and Rose sliding across the dance floor to the, ah, I do actually know who they are. Um, yeah, my mum is an avid um, Strictly fan. It was Rose who and Giovanni who um, won last year, isn't it? She was just incredible. Like... <laughs> forgive me if i'm wrong but she was a fully fledged dancer she's just one of those people that she started dancing and she was so graceful and amazing that um it was as if she'd already done always done that she it was as if she never ever 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 had not been a fully fledged dancer she was incredible so um yeah mm. Mm. right I don't think I, I did a few stitches then. Did you manage to do a few stitches? I hope you did. So here we go. Um, I'm using my fjord again because I, I do like fjord to knit with. I really do. Um, it's a it's a lovely wool, really really nice to knit with. Um, and it's it's one of those that if you quite enjoy doing stocking stitch, it's fine. If you don't, if you enjoy doing really complex things, it's not the wool for you. <laughs> Uh, but what was quite interesting, I went to um, <clears throat> my cast off, um, took probably three nights to complete, honestly, um, it, it does take a long time, but it is it is very, very effective. Um, and I went to a knitting, um, a knitting natter at John Lewis on, it was Thursday morning, wasn't it? Um, and I had this, and somebody said to me, oh, but that took some time. And, oh, yes, it did, thinking they meant the edge in, the bit around the middle. I went, no, that's self-stripes. And they went, what? I said, yeah, it's self-stripes. So it's it's amazing how many people haven't actually seen Field. Um, and, um, yeah, so, I, I, again, it's amazing, isn't it? Going to knitting groups because then we can share, people get inspired by what we're using, what we're knitting with. Um, <coughs> yeah, but it was it was really, really good. Um, and it's always nice when you've done something, isn't it? And so I said, oh, that's really good. That I bet that took you a lot of time. Like, no, it didn't. It just self-striped. So anyway, that was good fun. 
so anyway um <clears throat> I'm going to be sharing those patterns in a little bit, but what have we been up to this week? Um, so I had a bit of a result. So was it um, Wednesday? No, it was Thursday. My mum had a hair appointment. Wednesday I went to see my dad. Thursday, my mum had a hair appointment. So I took my mum to the hair appointment. It's the same hairdressers as me. And what I normally do is I leave her there and then I go off, sit in a cafe, you know, for a about three hours and then come back and I sat down and uh one of them said do you want a coffee and I thought oh yeah well and I was practically falling asleep and I thought you know what I can't even get up and leave and uh then my hairdresser said to me oh do you want me to do your hair while you're here today rather than like yesterday Friday but why have you got time I said yeah I've probably got enough time um uh, to do your hair so oh my word so he did um uh, my mum's hair then he put the colour on mine. So I was all done. So it was brilliant. Um, so we both got our hair done. Then we came home. Um, and then I so was due to have it done yesterday. Then I was meeting a friend. Then I was going to um, the opticians as they'd ordered in three pairs of frames to see if there were any that I liked. Um, so, yeah. So yesterday I had a bit of a um, result and a lie-in, which was lovely um and then i i met a friend for lunch who i haven't seen in quite a long time and then i went to the opticians and tried the first ones on i said yeah they're nice then i tried the second one i thought yeah they're nice and then the third pair put them on it was like wow i'm having these and i thought and then i said I haven't asked how much they are i don't care i'm having these so um yeah so when my new glasses arrive you will see them <laughs> So they're the same brand as I've had my last three pairs of glasses have been. Um, but yeah, so I can't wait. And there's bling on them. Okay, they're they're rather blingy. Um, but I just absolutely love them. So um I was so so pleased. So they'd ordered some in for me, they've ordered some in for my mum. So I'm taking my mum next week to see if there's any she likes. Um, yeah. And and this is this, this is the little bit of craziness, right? Um <laughs> I, my eyesight is so complex and so bad uh, that there is assistance towards, uh, I don't pay for eye tests because um, I'm so bad. Um, and they said to me, oh, and you get a little bit of assistance from the NHS towards your glasses. And I went, okay, <laughs> this is how crazy it is. Like for me to have very focal, so they're not that wide, the very focals, right? means that you can only look out of a thin strip and the more you pay on your lenses the very focals widens so i pay for the most expensive because that means i'm not just looking through a tiny strip here um so i got 33 pounds assistance towards my glasses and wait for it the lenses i'm not talking about the frames the lenses in my glasses cost nearly 800 pounds can you imagine <laughs> it's just like it is crazy it is absolutely ridiculous and, and i said if i didn't come here and if i had the cheapest pair of very focals out there um like cheapest lenses i could get could i get the lenses for 30 odd pounds and i said no absolutely no way so um yeah so i just wanted to share that with you how i, I don't have an option um you know i've tried to get cheaper glasses and i have to say um they couldn't actually get my prescription right. That's how hard and how complex it is. So I go, I travel to Northwood, which is <clears throat> on the way. And it's quite a way. Um, it, I probably have to allow an hour to get there. But they assess people before they go to Moorfields Eye Hospital. They are extremely well trained. Um, they stock any type of lens. Any type of contact lens, I my contact lenses, I can't get them from normal opticians. I can only get them from that. It's it's just crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, so I thought I would share that. Um, so yeah, you, you can imagine, can't you? I don't have an option. Uh, but yeah, um, ridiculous money, absolutely ridiculous money. But here we go. Um, that's what we do. Anyway, um, let's have a look. So Brigitte says, 
Uh, oh, we were talking about Giovanni and Rose, weren't we? Uh, Brigade says, I'm stitching a card for Rod for our anniversary next month. Oh, that is so lovely. And we also saw, um, we've seen them in pictures, but I've never seen them in the flesh. And honestly, the cards are just incredible. Actually, I have seen them because I've got one. So thank you very much. I've got one or two, I think. Um, so that is lovely. Um, Georgia says it was from the film Maleficent who is the witch from Sleeping Beauty. Thank you so much. The film is about her story and why she came across as evil, but wasn't really. She was just treated badly. I'm going to have to watch that film now. Thank you so much. I'm watching that film. At Laura says, it's definitely an investment, Angela. <laughs> Your new glasses. I know. <clears throat> Thankfully, because I get contact lenses from them, and this is something else, I can't get contact lenses from a normal optician's because they don't deal with these obscure companies that do such high um, toric prescriptions. Um, yeah, and because I pay for them monthly, um, I get 20% off my glasses, so it really is worth it for me. Like 20% off when your glasses are over £1,000 is a lot of saving, so I, I go there. Um, but yeah, so um, ah, bonkers. And I, I was saying, when I was little, Used to be able to get a pair of NHS glasses, but I won't wear them anyway. So uh, never mind. Georgie says, your hair looks beautiful. Thank you very much. I'm back to blonde. When it starts coming through, it isn't grey, it's dark brown. Um, <laughs> that's what it looks like. And Brigitte says, I believe you as Rod went to a specialist in Chesham to get lenses with wider vision. Yes, we, we don't realise, do we? And I, the reason why I share this is because um sometimes your glasses cost no no more money <clears throat> going to a specialist but honestly the clarity that i get on my prescription is amazing because on the one occasion i went to a standard place th there were just no edges to anything like okay i had 20 20 vision legal vision as i call it but it wasn't good vision um, so at least going there, I know that they're amazing. Um, but yeah, for anything, you know, whether I suppose whether it's hearing aids, whether it's glasses, if if you're av if you've got an average issue, then that's fine. Anyone can deal with that. But once you get really complex, that's where you have to spend um, a little bit more money, I think, and go to somebody who is really really overqualified. So um, yeah, so. Hey ho, but the glasses are fab. Um, and I do think if you buy some glasses that you really like, like they're, they're that shape, they're dark red again. Uh, I think they're called a burgundy or claret or something like that. Um, and they've got lots of bling on, on here. Um, so I, I just love them. Yeah, look really nice. So um, yeah, that was me yesterday. So I said I was going to share something, didn't I, about the. Um, so, oh, and. What we're doing later well it's a little <clears throat> restaurant in london and they've got um a deli that i've been to quite a bit and um i go there and get a lot of herbs and spices and it's like a mediterranean type place israeli type place i don't know anyway they do just amazing stuff and they always have some gluten-free stuff in there and one of their restaurants um the lease is up and the landlord sold the building so it's the last day that this restaurant will be open honey and co um the, they have another one and they've they're ready to open a, um, a new one in um next month so anyway i had booked a table for one for me and then i rang i thought oh can i take my mum so i rang them up yesterday i said oh is there any chance i could change my table to a table for two and she's let me have a look i said i can change the time and said oh can you come at 4 30. Like, yeah uh, that's fine so they just changed it i thought this is their last day they must be absolutely banged out uh, because everyone has to have the last meal in what is a ta it's probably the smallest restaurant in London, honestly, with all these tiny, tiny tables. But I just wanted to go there. So I, I was just so happy that they shuffled things around to accommodate us. Um, yeah, so I, I can't wait. So I think we're having, well, I'm going to have um, baked, oh, what is it, eggplant um, with like 
pomegranate molasses and things like that on and uh, so i can't wait i really can't wait and whatever happens i'll order two meals but will i i'll either have to eat both or we'll have to bring one home because my mum will only eat a tiny little bit so we're going to go and enjoy so i've got that this afternoon so um driving into central london uh, we're going to Fitzrovia. um bloomsbury Fitzrovia. i absolutely love that area of london um don't think there's any wool shops don't think i've ever spotted a wool shop but i might have to have a look around and see what's there um I, i'm like one of those i get out the tube station and i just make a beeline and today i've got my mum so we're going to drive up there find somewhere to park which will be fun um <clears throat> yeah we've got we've got a blue badge so um it's fine um i'll find somewhere um, but I just thought, even if, don't, if I have to drive a little way, we'll just grab a cab to the restaurant and then grab a cab back. Um, but yeah, so I can't wait. I really can't wait. Oh, hello, Anne. Lovely to see you. And I'm just going to finish this row and then I'm going to show you the two, the two books that I bought. I was so inspired by. Actually, I'll find them now. Where did I put the books? They're here. And... Um, so I've got some pictures in Facebook, but this is one of the books. Um, let's see. It might be easy to show you, but um, what I love about this book, and it's Madder, and there's Anthology 1, 2, and 3, I believe. They will have something like a cardigan with a particular stitch in it, and then they will make it into a kit or a scarf or a shawl or um, a jumper. And it's really nice how there is a certain stitch that they put in several different um, patterns. This was the other one, this Jules, which is rough. I will say it's very, very dark, which is probably why it attracted to me, the ex-goth. Um, but there's just some lovely, lovely patterns in here. And there's a very simple and plain jumper where all of the detail is around um, the shoulder. Um, which I just thought was so incredible. And it's called Citrine. Um, and what they do, it's um, it's boxy cropped with close fitting sleeves, incredibly flattering neckline um, and bold lines accentuating the shoulders. Um, it's, it's just lovely. And they interview each of the designers in here. So it's not just patterns and pictures. Um, like there's the little they ask the designer um could you tell us a bit about your company and yourself walk us the, through the process from growing the fiber to the finished yarns so it's a real real book um it's amazing so i'm gonna go into facebook and just show you some of the pictures um so you can see what i mean by that let me uh, just make sure i'm on here um right just go into the group <coughs> whoops right that's all okay here we go so here we go and this is um the one that i've put on there the two books so this is the first one mother and as you can see, I'm just going to increase that. So that is um, what is a very basic, is it a reverse stocking stitch? I think for most of it, um, I don't know if that's a top down, bottom. I don't know how it's constructed. I haven't actually looked. But when you actually look at that detail around there, that is, I've done that stitch a few times or similar stitches and there, it, it's amazing how it creates this beautiful beautiful um twist and something that i think really works in that beautiful twist is not to have what i call a hairy yarn a fluffy yarn so you can really see the stitch detail and the stitch definition and i don't i know that when we make a beautiful investment piece we tend to spend a lot of money on yarn but i do think that that twisted stitch 
um, would be great in any type of yarn. I, I like doing things in uh, what I would term really natural fibres, only so that you can your body can breathe <laughs> and regulate the temperature in them. But that stitch does not need expensive yarn. I'm telling you, you're just looking for stitch definition with that. Um, it's beautiful. And you have that one. Sorry, I'm going to have to keep going in and out. Um, and here's another one. How about that for a, a bold statement in the front? And this one, it's in adult sizes and children's sizes. And they use that scallop in the front for, short, for um, a shawl and a scarf. It's really quite incredible. And when you look at the bottom of that, can you see the bottom at the front? I just think it's amazing. And if you were doing something for someone who, you know, just wants something a little bit lower at the front, absolutely perfect. So um, you can tell I'm, I'm just so um, infused by it. Look, here is that scallop design on something different, which is, I don't know whether that's a scarf or a shawl, um, but you can see the scallop in that um, again. And I think that, you know, this book is one of those books that once you, it, it's teaching you um, stitches. And I really like this one as well. This is a fingering weight um, cardigan. And I didn't know if I had enough of my um, um, camel left for it because I thought the camel would be lovely in this. But again, that's got a lovely, <clears throat> the necklines, what I are what I call forgiving they're not very high um and I just think again that's a beautiful one on to the next one oh this is this is that cardigan you can see the the stitch there so I think what you do is you construct cardigan and then um which I think is probably going to be quite a simple design and then you pick up the stitches um on the outside and then you will knit um out for that beautiful detail there but also when you see there it's also that that um twisted stitch is on the pockets now you can put that on anything that you want once you create these stitches so as i said it's it's a book that i um read i was inspired by it here's a scarf really simple scarf and I have done one like this with those stitches in it. Um, but that is so different because it's, um, can you see here at the, at the sides? The ones that I've done, they go all to the end. Whereas these are just like eyelets, aren't they? So I absolutely love this. I got, I got the more I looked through the book, the more inspired I was by it. Um, that's the cardigan. I think it uses a is it worsted weight i don't know but you can just see how many times if you're doing quite a basic cardigan you can think i'm going to edge it differently or if you've got one with edging and you want something with more wow um that's one of them so so i hope you enjoyed that one that was the um the first book and now we'll have a look at this second book jules <clears throat> and just here on the right hand side this is a cardigan sorry it's a jumper um and, and it looked like looks like stained glass it really does it, it it's lovely um you can't see these very well but there's some socks and i looked at them and thought oh my word that is such detail in socks they look amazing um, and it took me back to my childhood whenever i got new socks they always had little um holes in them like that real patterns obviously machined on from a shop i think i got most of them from woolworths uh, but yeah so there's a lovely um sock pattern and this I, I again really forgiving neckline it's not really high um but how often do we not have enough wool for a for a cardigan or a jumper um we've got loads of it haven't we in our stashes but you could put two colours together. So you would have enough for a jumper. It's just the fact that you're working it in two different colours. Uh, but I love the fact that the top of that is um, it's, a, it's a dark grey. It's not actually black. Um, and that's um, 
this I can't remember what that's called. It's got a lovely, lovely name. Um I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm. Is it um no tourmaline, which I think is lovely. Uh, so I do think that's quite an incredible jumper. Um uh, so simple and would end up using so much stash up. Um and you can just adapt it, can't you? You can use different different wool um different needle sizes just go really small or much larger depending on the wool that you're using but yeah i think it's just lovely and this is the one that i definitely wanted uh, this i want to do this <laughs> what can i just say i read the pattern and you got to stick it um so um a lot of my wool isn't suitable for sticking um so certainly not all of the recycled wool that i've got um but can you just see the detail on that i thought how amazing you could put that detail around the bottom um you could put i know that it's going to be expanding out but you can get the pattern from in here and put that into bags up the side of bags bottoms of jumpers you name it i, I just think it's lovely oops hang on what am i doing now let me go back to that here we go on to the next one and that's just um a closer detail of that cardigan and again in this book they interview each of the designers so they can see what their inspiration is you can hear a little bit about where <coughs> how they've arrived at where they are and here, when I was talking about that simple jumper with that shoulder detail, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like normally, all you do is just reduce um, to shape the shoulder. But there's this beautiful pattern at the top of the shoulder and also um, around um, the bit where you, you reduce. So just really interesting patterns. And sometimes when you want something... A little bit different rather than one color honestly that is so effective really really effective um so that's the Mada anthology one um and you can see it's camilla sibella imogen and beatrice those are the four sort of pattern houses i suppose that are in there um but you can just get so many ideas i think we're going through it again aren't we so that's that so that was that one so i hope you enjoyed that let me just go back and see if there's any um comments and i'll try and ca catch up on chat um deborah says oh bless keeps losing the signal she's in the middle of the countryside uh, and Brigitte says she lost connection towards the end of the musical interlude and I'm in the middle of Leighton Buzzard. The detail on the card is, is so stylish. Um, yeah. And Laura says, what fab designs. Thank you for showing them to us. Do you know what? It's amazing because when we normally go to a, um, a sewing group, uh, sorry, a knitting group, a knit and natter, that's what we do, isn't it? We just get inspired by everyone. And I'm just trying to find my... Um, no, nope. hang on a minute. I just need to find my Facebook again. Hang on a minute. I'll just go back and there we go. So gone through those. So, oh my word, Brigitte needed a quick gift for a dear friend. Made. Um, friend I made on second holiday in England. Oh, she met on a second holiday in England 55 years ago. I know it's going into summer, but the Miss Marple scarf will keep till colder seasons made the headband herself as well. That is amazing. A oh, well done, Brigitte. That just looks so stylish. I, I just love the Miss Marple. And, and do you know what, sometimes, especially um, here, it does get cool in the evenings or afternoons doesn't it and it's just the perfect thing to to pop on and uh, that is lovely as well so well done Brigitte absolutely love the Miss Marple how many Miss Marple scarves have we actually created this year lots and lots and lots 
I haven't looked at this, the English yarn sh shop suit yet, but I will do. Um, oh, um, Marion had um, posted about this retreat. I've totally forgotten about that. So I don't know if anybody has posted there. Um, I think we may have caught up. Oh, there's a thing up. Uh, um, all accessories. Yeah, I don't think we've got any of these left, but all accessories are half price now. Um, mugs and everything. That was Robert's birthday. So, oh, wow, Linda made a needle punched heart and stuck onto her husband's card, Valentine's card in 2019. Thank you so much. This was, I bought that book, hadn't I? What <laughs> was the kit? But never mind. Um, so, um, yeah. And Robert did say that we were going to go somewhere, so not to buy anything. Is that supposed to be at the week? I don't know. Um, I will buy some eventually. I'm still knitting at the moment. And I've got to do that pattern. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so I'm going to be doing that pattern. And these are some pictures of the retreat. So I think we're caught up. Um, yeah, I think we are caught up now. So let me stop sharing and go back. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those. Oops. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I bought some Bar Am You yarn from that company, Fine Fettle Yarns, quite some time ago, a few months ago. It's in a box in the stash in the office. Um, and uh, anyway, I bought it and, and I look back on and, and they only had the purple left. Um, and they didn't have the DK, which is what I wanted to try and get. I've got the full ply, but not the DK. So anyway, it's all gone. Um, but I did find other amazing yarns that they have. And then when I started looking through their book, oh, wow. Some of the, the books are amazing on there. And they're not the usual ones. And when you start to look at some of these smaller um yarn companies they stock things that aren't really on amazon and if they are on there the books are so expensive and um, so it's a lot cheaper um to go to find fettle yarns but if you if you're looking for some unusual inspiration have a look at their pattern books um they're really good um and i'm sure like i know that safi has done lots of tin can knits things um i think tin can knits are in quite a few of the london um companies as well aren't there um some of the um london based um yarn shops um but yeah i i, I just love buying amazing pattern books um so i'm gonna i'm gonna sit there one day and read through in the garden and read all of those patterns and the inspiration um so you are more than welcome laura um Oh, hello, Robert. Said morning all. Just popped in for a few minutes. Thank you very much. We've had, uh, you've now converted me. I'm going to watch Maleficent or whatever it is. <clears throat> because Georgie's told me um, a summary of the story. Uh, so I want to hear about it. Um, and so, Robert, I hope you, that you're having a lovely day today. Um, I know you've got a day off on Monday. So just one day, one more day after today, and then you've got a day off. Deborah says, um, the gift for your friend is fabulous, Brigitte. It is. Who wouldn't love one of those scarves? Um, and that, whilst they're quite simple, they are stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, so, yeah. Um, and Amber says, thank you, everyone, for a wonderful start to the weekend. Yay! Saturday, isn't it? She's been stitching up baby booties for a co-worker. Wow, what a very, very lucky co-worker um, to have such an amazing gift for me. Um, now I can play with my Goggle Frogs yarn. <gasps> Has it arrived? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Fabulous. Uh, enjoy. Absolutely enjoy that. Um, isn't it amazing? Like um, when people get um, a gift that's been handmade, it is so special. It is so, so special. So I know your friends will love that and your co-worker will love them as well. Brigitte says, Laura, I thought you were my friend already. 
Um, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Laura says, Brigitte, can I be your friend? Ha, ha, ha. Um, and uh, so, so that was that. Brigitte say, Laura, I thought you were my friend already. Deborah say, morning, Robert. And Laura said, it's great to have like-minded friends. Thank you all. And I do have to get quite close. Honestly, when I've got glasses on, it's much easier for me to read a screen. But with, with my complex eyesight, I have one sh short-sighted, one long-sighted contact lens. That's how I wear contact lenses. So I can see away. But when it comes to trying to look at the screen, hey-ho. Um, but that's when you have a really complicated prescription. So, uh, yeah, hey-ho. Um, so I've done three rows now. We're going to go on to row four in a moment. What time is it? Oh, it's only 10 to 10. Um, yeah, so I will do that. So anyway, Robert, are you having a good day at work? Hopefully you are. Cheers. I'm using your mug. Got lots of lipstick on. Mm. And then at one o'clock, I'll be jumping in the car and we'll be driving into London. Our table isn't until half past four. But I thought just in case, we, um, if we're there within an hour an hour and a half that's fine um but if it takes us longer then i'm not stressing um because there's no way that i can go back on another day <laughs> because the restaurant closes as of today um yeah um so i'll have a wander around because who you're never quite sure when i walked around there um uh a few weeks ago i i walked past one cafe that had a sign um that it had uh, a doggy menu so menu for doggies um so we'll see what it's like on a saturday because normally i walk around on on a weekday um but we're going to see what it's like today um so that would be nice a nice drive into london um have dinner and then drive home um yeah that'd be lovely <clears throat> really 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 nice so we're up so um i'll do four rows of this and then I'll do my um, my whizzy stuff. This is called Twist and Shout. Um, a Twist and Shout cow. Uh, and you'll see why when you go through. If you're on my workshop, um, you'll see why I call it that. <laughs> there could be lots of shouting. Who knows if you get it wrong. So, um... <coughs> I have just got, do you know what, Laura? covid free i don't know if you've got this it's just the silliest tickliest cough that i've got left um it's just so blooming annoying when you try and talk a lot hmm. Hmm. oh there's nothing like tea it was nicer when it was hot but i didn't have time to drink it all when i was hot so um when it was hot so after this i'll make myself another cup of tea oh so um, let's have a quick look. Um, and Robert says, retreat is three weeks on Tuesday. Can you believe it? I can't believe it's only three weeks away. Um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be so exciting. Can't wait. And um, yeah, don't worry. The agenda and everything is coming out. Um, Laura says, I had an annoying cold with a headache. My cough disappeared after a couple of days. I was lucky, I think. Oh, well, I tell you what. I was so lucky I because I was on Google Frogs on Wednesday, wasn't I? And um, I suddenly realised that I hadn't smelt anything at all. I don't have a, a great sense of smell after the first COVID. Uh, like I had none for about a year. Um, but it just totally went again. And I could not smell the flora. Uh, but that has come back. So I can... It doesn't smell it as it's supposed to. Because... I can't smell lots of the notes in things, so um, so it's quite bizarre. And I can't smell when anything's burning. If I'm uh, making toast under the cheese on toast under the grill, I don't know if it's burning, so I have to keep checking. Um, yeah, it, it's really weird when you're used to baking. Um, you don't really put a timer on because you wait until you can smell the cake in a certain way, and then you know it's ready. Um, and yeah, that's all gone for the last like two and a bit years. Um, I haven't been able to do that. So I have to use a timer, which is so bizarre. It's just so bizarre. Um, yeah, but I've, I've 
I burnt cheese on toast a few times. <laughs> oh dear. I can make a huge great dinner, um, but I can't tell when, when the toast is burning. So hey ho, I did buy a toaster, but I don't like it. It makes it makes the toast too crispy. And I think we had this conversation a few weeks ago, didn't we? Um, it hasn't gone back. It's still sitting there because I'm just carrying on making my toast under the under the grill. And it's how I prefer my toast made. Um, I don't know why. Does anyone else find that? Oh, dear. So that's me. And uh, we're, we're nearly at the end of the hour, aren't we? But I've just realised I've got Curly sitting here as well. Uh, Georgie made this. So Curly is beautiful, is beautiful and sits here. Actually sits on the radiator looking at me. Um, so we'll we'll sit Kelly back on the on the radiator. He's very happy there, very happy. Um, gets nice and warm every so often. <laughs> oh dear, here we go. <coughs> I've nearly finished this one. I've just realised. You know what? I did actually buy another pattern um, from when I bought those two books. Um, and I think I put the pattern in with all of the other bits, um, my normal patterns. Um, but that was a little jumper that I thought looked quite nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's really nice as well. Um, but I hope that I I hope that you just um, take some inspiration from those books. You might not like them at all. Um, but for, from those two books, I think sometimes we think, oh, do you know what? I could change the bottom of that jumper and put a totally different jumper um bottom on and sometimes if you think that's a little bit the the edging is too plain do you know what i'm going to look and adapt it um yeah so um sometimes we have to pick up all the stitches and then work out um how many stitches we've got and how many stitches are in the pattern repeat and then if you need any extra at both ends but once you've done that and I know that sounds simple. Once you once you've done that, then it sort of works, doesn't it? So um, yeah. So um, yeah. And Deborah says, um, sorry. Let's go through. Uh, Brigitte, says, thank you for a happy hour. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yes. Um, and Laura says, have a great weekend too. Amber says, happy crafting, everyone. Have a happy weekend. Yay. Um, and Deborah says, thanks for a lovely morning, Angela. Have a great weekend, everyone. And Laura says, a big thumbs up. So we're on 56. I'm going to go to the 11. Um, I'm just going to sit and enjoy mm. and get part way through my last row before I start doing the twisting and the shouting um, for this cow. So this is the second one. So by the time I get to the retreat, I should have a few different cows. The only thing that slows me down is, as I said, the um, bind off, the cast off, which is, um, take. it just takes time. It's not hard, it's fiddly, uh, but it's absolutely fine. Um, here we go. There we go. So I'll see if I can get this done. It's, it's, only, it's only a few stitches, so we'll see if I can finish this little row. <clears throat> Not playing yarn chicken because there's plenty, plenty in one of these balls. There really is, um, but I'm I'm liking the. It's like stone and a and a mid purple. It's not light purple, but it's not dark purple. So it, is it more like a, an amethyst type type purple? Um, yeah. So it's it's lovely and it's nice to knit with and and I love knitting on the chow goos. Although those silver, oh, they're knit pros, but they've got silver metal, um, like, um, what do you call them, points, and they are fixed. They are very, very, very good. Um, other than the points are slightly different, uh, but they're very good, and they don't twist um, very much, or at least they don't seem to twist. Um, as some do. So if you can't get chow goes, have a look at the um, Knit Pro with the um, with the silver bits as well. And um, oh, it's telling me that I'm nearly out of battery, but we've only got two minutes left, so we'll be fine. <laughs> we will be able to go until the end. Um, yeah. 
and I've got my little I, I just love that gin and tonic liquid sanity let me take that off now I'll just pop it down there there we go and at some point I will wear that cardigan again but whenever I put it on it's always on a nice day and it's a it's a linen blend but it is actually quite warm as well. <laughs> so, you know, when you put a cardigan on, you just think this is really, really lovely and warm. Uh, so I don't wear it very often at all. Oh, and we're just about at 11 o'clock. So I'm going to say have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And we will see you again on Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Um, and yeah, so that will be 337. Wow will be three three seven won't it let me have a look um uh yep so we'll have episode three three seven on wednesday night 8 p.m um it will be myself and robert and maybe marion will be with us um but whatever just have a lovely 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 day lovely weekend get lots of crafting in and lots of time for you so it's been absolutely amazing spending the next last hour with you um and have a wonderful goggle goggle frogging weekend okay you take care bye